This is a review of the Nikon E-M, a camera which was introduced in 1979 and ran through 82 and was Nikon's least expensive, lightest, smallest 35mm camera. I'm going to start off with a review of the controls of the camera. Then I'm going to go over my likes and dislikes. A little bit about the history of the camera and my history with it. Then I'll show some pictures I've taken with the camera. We're going to start off on the top plate right side and you're going to notice right away that the controls look different than almost any other 35mm camera, Nikon or otherwise. The film advance lever is where you would expect it to be, but the shutter release button is in the middle of it. Nothing special or interesting about the frame counter window, but you will notice something interesting. The shutter speed dial is missing. Instead, you get a shutter operation mode selector and index. Auto mode on this camera is aperture priority, so you pick the aperture and the camera picks the shutter speed. If the batteries are dead and the camera is in auto mode, the shutter will fire at 1 1 thousandth of a second. When in M90 mode, the shutter will fire at 1 90th of a second whether there's batteries in the camera or not. And in bulb mode, the shutter will remain open as long as the shutter release button is pressed down. Finally, we have the battery power check button and battery power LED lamp. On the top plate left side, you have the film speed set dial and rewind lever. Moving to the front plate right side, you have the self timer lever. And moving to the left side on the front plate, you have the lens release button and also a button that allows you to set the exposure compensation on this camera. Not much to see on the back plate, just a note holder. Looking at the bottom plate left to right, you see the motor drive coupler, the film spool release, the tripod socket, the battery door cover, and also the motor drive uh, electronic contacts. Looking into the viewfinder, you will find Nikon's proven and loved 6040 center weighted metering. 60% is weighted inside the largest circle and the other 40 is everything outside the largest circle. On the left is the shutter speed index. You choose the aperture and the needle points to the shutter speed that the camera is choosing for you. The notch indicates the flash sync's shutter speed and there's a red light that will indicate when the flash is ready. The first thing you realize when you pick up the camera is just how small it is. Here it is next to my L35 AF point and shoot. It's actually shorter than the point and shoot if you don't count the pentaprism and it's just a hair wider. Here it is next to my FE2. Removing the shutter speed dial and moving the shutter release to the center of the frame advance really saved a lot of space for Nikon. Nikon brought out this camera in 1979 as a less expensive, less complicated camera for people who were perhaps intimidated by all of the controls on their other cameras. I mean, this camera really has very few controls on it. it now I'm going to talk about the things that this camera is missing that I care about. The first is the depth of field preview lever. So that's typically a lever on this side of the camera that you'd push in and that would show you the depth of field or depth of focus that you're going to get with the aperture you've chosen. And that's really important with most of my photography. So I I think, I mean, you kind of get used to knowing that a wide open aperture gives you a really deep uh, a really shallow focus and so you have a lot of blur but it's nice to see how much how much of the background is blurred uh, and then you know a, a really high number on the shutter speed it really shuts down the aperture that gives you a uh, depth a really wide depth so like for landscapes I suppose you would um, have no blur in the background everything would be in sharp focus the next thing that I think this camera is missing that I actually care about is an AE lock button. So the way an AE lock button is, if your subject is is lit from the back, then it's going to throw the meter off, or really strongly lit from the side, then the meter is going to read that light source, and your main subject is going to be underexposed. What an AE lock button allows you to do would be to point the camera directly at your subject, leaving the light source out, take a reading, and then lock that in recompose with the light in but it's it's locking that exposure and then take the picture what this button does here it's called a exposure compensation button it gives you two stops so it kind of tries to get there for you in a simpler way i guess i i would rather have an exposure lock button and the 
Third thing that I think this camera is missing that I care about is it's not a TTL flash, which is really a great uh, flash. It's really accurate. Now I'm going to talk about the things that this camera is missing that I don't really care about. The first is the shutter speed dial because it's an aperture priority camera. You don't really need that. And also, there's no exposure compensation uh, dial on the camera. You can actually get around this by just adjusting your film speed because by setting your film speed you're adjusting the sensitivity of the meter and the exposure compensation is doing the exact same thing. You just have to remember after you've taken the pictures that need the adjustment you put it back to where your film is at. So it's really important to use the memo holder to put what your film is actually set to. You normally put your film speed, I just wrote it on a piece of paper, but you could just put the, a piece of the uh, box or whatever in there. That way you can set it back after you've adjusted it to change your meter as needed. And the multiple exposure lever, because you never really use that outside of like when you're taking a class, or in my experience, I haven't. So a few things that make this camera unique. Number one is this battery check button and battery check light. You push the button and the light lights up if the batteries are fine. The thing is most Nikon cameras, you do this check by simply looking through the viewfinder and depressing the shutter button so that the uh, meter comes on. If the meter comes on, the battery is fine. Seems pretty logical. So I'm not really sure why that's needed. The, another thing is the exposure compensation button. Really, it's a plus two button. I think it would be much better as an A lock, but maybe they just tried to keep this, I mean, obviously they tried to keep it super simple. So you just, you know, just push this button and, and it gives you two more stops. So if it's reading, if the, if the shutter speed is reading, it's gonna take the picture at one five hundredth of a second. It'll drop two stops to give you two stops more light, so you get one one twenty-fifth of a second. And obviously the third thing that makes this camera unique is there's no shutter speed dial, which is probably a first for Nikon in a SLR, where you can change the lenses out. Another thing that makes this camera unique is the film advance lever. It's actually hinged in the middle, so you kick it out, and then you advance your film. I think it's the only Nikon that does that, that I know of. Another interesting thing about this camera is it will fire the shutter in auto mode, even if there's no batteries or if the batteries are dead in the camera. It actually will assign a fixed speed of one one thousandths of a second, but it'll still fire. So that's really neat because this is a, you know, reduced function, sort of a lower cost camera. But in every selection on the shutter mode, it'll actually fire the shutter even if there's no battery. So that's pretty impressive, I think. The, you know, the bulb and the M90, it, um, M90 is one ninetieth of a second. Those, of course, will fire without batteries. That's, you know, that'll work on most cameras. But the auto mode is the mode that normally would nothing would work, right? So that's very interesting, I think. One of the things I really do appreciate about this camera, you know, it being an aperture priority camera, is the fact that it's very quick to get the picture. You, you know, set it in auto mode and you adjust the aperture to give you your depth of focus. You see in the viewfinder what shutter speed the camera is going to pick to give you the correct exposure. And then you kind of do an aperture shutter speed dance to you know get the two to your liking for the type of picture you're taking. You know the aperture gives you your depth of focus, your shutter speed gives you your blur, motion blur or not, and you adjust your aperture, the camera adjusts the shutter speed, when you're happy with the two you take the picture. It's a very quick way to get the picture and truthfully most of my cameras that have the aperture priority ability that's the way I shoot them. So I really just bought this camera to add to my collection 
But then I started doing this video series on reviewing my 35 millimeter film cameras. And so I decided it'd be a good idea to put some batteries in it and run a roll or two of film through it. And I really, I really am glad I did because I discovered this is really a great little camera. It is quick to get the picture. It feels solid in your hands. You know, I, I read that it has the copper aluminum frame that the other cameras have, and it's, it's got this plastic outer shell, it's, it's, or it's fiberglass outer shell. Uh, but it feels sturdy. It doesn't feel super lightweight or super cheap like some of my cameras do, which I'll get to in my reviews. So I'm really glad I, I actually started using the camera, and I recommend it. Another great thing about this camera is because it didn't sell so well, they are really inexpensive on Craigslist and eBay. So take a look. I found them for as cheap as $15, um, and you can find a ton of them for around the $40 range. Uh, definitely a lot of them under $100. And they'll shoot the same Nikon glass. They have the same F mount. So you can get the same amazing pictures as those expensive Nikon cameras that most of us have. It's a great little camera. Here's just a few pictures I've taken on some expired 400 speed print film and using the 51.8 series E lens. Thanks for watching my video and if you liked it, hit the like button and think about subscribing. Also, if you have some ideas for film camera reviews you'd like me to do, leave some comments down below. Thanks. And it would, you know, lock the exposure. Oh shit, that's the wrong button. Sorry, never mind. Wrong thing. Okay. The second biggest thing that this camera's missing that I miss... Well, that doesn't make any sense. And if you like some blah 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 blah. Okay, try it again. We're just starting over. <laughs> I lost the camera. Number two, uh, the big, the second biggest thing, uh, reason I'm, uh, or, sorry. <clears throat> Just by adjusting the shutter speed. Or, nope, not by the shutter speed. The first is a aperture priority. Shit, that's not right. Okay.